Dr. Kundapali, tell me about the type of sarcomas that you see in sure. the GYN world. So the most common sarcomas we see in the GYN world are uh, uterine sarcomas, really. Uh, that's the most common. And the three most common types are uterine lyomyosarcoma, endometrial stromal sarcoma, and adenosarcoma. So it would be kind of the big categories of sarcomas that we see. Carcinosarcomas have kind of slowly been moved out, we think, of the uh, sarcoma realm. We think that those are more just very poorly differentiated uh, endometrioid, endometrial mm -hmm. cancers is kind of what our thinking is now. Uh, so, but those are the three big categories of mm -hmm. sarcomas that we see. We do see some ovarian sarcomas mm -hmm. as well. I have a handful of ovarian, primary ovarian sarcomas and ovarian carcinosarcomas. But again, those are exceedingly, exceedingly rare. Uh, we occasionally will see vulvar sarcomas as well. Um, and so it's interesting because those all behave in kind of similar manners, but at the same time can be very different as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in, you know, the realm of medical oncology mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. sarcomas, I mean, the, the difficulty and I think the importance mm -hmm. of having expertise is that there's so many different types. Absolutely, I mean, yeah. There's greater than 60 different subtypes of sarcoma which can arise either in, either in bone or in soft tissue. And even say liposarcoma, which is mm -hmm. a sarcoma of fat tissue, mm -hmm. there's three different types sure. that all have three different drivers. And right. really having some nuance in that is, uh, gets pretty challenging. And um, because of that, I think it gets really important to, to be able to have uh, adequate volumes to be able to, to sure. develop that nuance and actually have available trials for these patients that we you know that we need to develop new drugs and so sure. what is the kind of volume that you see within your group uh, for sarcomas in general so for sarcomas in general in our group and we're actually a pretty large group mm -hmm. we'd see a, I'd say we see about 10 to 20 a year mm -hmm. um, which is you know obviously not a huge volume mm -hmm. as compared to a group that is fully so focused mm -hmm. on all sarcomas mm -hmm. um, so we see actually a decent amount uh, mm -hmm. comparatively maybe to uh, you know, a community G1 oncologist or community medical oncologist, uh, but still certainly not the volume that well, I think that is Well, are very groups. uncommon. Right, and they're in, uncommon in, too. In, right. uh, in the GYN right. uh, tumors. And so mm -hmm. we actually see close to, I think last year we saw about 260 to 280 new wow. patients mm -hmm. a year. Right. And so uh, that with that comes, you know, we, we, that gives us more options. Mm -hmm. okay? We can d open up trials for these various subtypes, and I right. think it's really important. Right. So, um, you know, what do you commonly see as like pitfalls? for treating sarcomas, and, sure. I can, and I can talk about that as well. Right, so I think the f most common pitfall that we see is getting the right diagnosis. Mm -hmm. um, the pathology Absolutely. is so incredibly important. So I think that one of the most important things that I would say to anybody that is treating sarcomas is make sure it's read by an expert pathologist because the treatment is different. For example, there are some sarcomas that might be a little bit more radiosensitive than others. Um, and so we wanna make sure that we are treating the right sarcomas uh, and having the right diagnosis. I, I wholeheartedly agree. Right. I, mean, I think mm. things we see so frequently is oftentimes they will be uh, diagnosed with an undifferentiated cancer or something sure. like that. Uh. Or, whereas someone that has much more expertise and much more experience with these types of mm. tumors can actually give us a much more defined sure. diagnosis, which really can affect how we approach the treatment because they may have different Absolutely. molecular drivers or, or translocations that actually sure. are amenable to different treatments. Sure. The other uh, pitfall that I think is just having the expertise in what to do once you do get the diagnosis. Mm -hmm. For example, if you have a very rare type of, of sarcoma, such a, as there's a uterine adenosarcoma mm -hmm. or an endometrial stromal sarcoma, these are pretty rare. The incidence of these is very rare um, in, the, you know, in the practice that, that we have. Um, so making sure that you have that. For example, you might treat a low-grade endometrial stromal sarcoma different than a high-grade endometrial stromal sarcoma. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that level of expertise to know that there is a difference in treatment between those two processes. Uh, you might put the patient at unnecessary harm by over-treating or at unnecessary harm by under-treating. So I think that mm -hmm. it's incredibly important to be collaborative and to, uh, for these very aggressive tumors, because they are many times very aggressive, mm -hmm. getting them treated appropriately. Yeah, I think um, an important pitfall that we see is actually, you know, sarcomas are not carcinomas. Correct. Mesenchymal mm -hmm. tumors behave inherently differently, sure, they have absolutely. different biology. Mm -hmm. Our approach to them is also different, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we oftentimes will do metastectomies where we take out tumors, in the, we take out multiple tumors in the lung, which would be pretty much unheard of for an ovarian cancer. Very I mean, true. That would, and then it doesn't make sense, but right. the thing is these tend to be a bit more uh, mm -hmm. insensitive to chemotherapies. Mm -hmm. So we have to push the dose more, and that right. makes people nervous, right. I think. Right, and um, that brings up, I think, a very, very important point, and that is 
the incredibly important role between the kind of medical oncology side and the surgical oncology mm -hmm. side being collaborative because I, I couldn't agree more. We've shared patients before that we probably wouldn't have given chemotherapy to and have actually mm -hmm. proceeded with surgery and mm -hmm. surgical resection and have kind of increased progression-free survival uh, in those patients. Um, in a patient with an isolated lung met or an isolated uh, liver met uh, with a sarcoma, we right. might be more amenable to surgical resection in that disease process and a sarcomatous disease process than perhaps a carcinomatous process. Mm -hmm. So I think that that is very important.